Hey guys, Chicky Domain, aka Debu, with a YouTube video forecast update. This forecast update effective around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, June 14, 2021. And okay, guys, welcome to the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. We always like to start our videos off by letting you know we are primarily a surf and marine forecaster covering the North Atlantic waters, looking for weather patterns and or systems that create high seas and or high surf. You can't have high surf without high seas. This means during hurricane season, we are watching for the development and for track of tropical cyclones that are developing that can produce fun surf alert conditions or possible major swell events. Start you off with the latest tropical weather outlook out of the National Hurricane Center. We have three areas that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring and uh, one of them is down in the Bay of Campeche that has become 92L invest high chance at 70 percent chance of development off the outer banks we have tropical depression 2 forecast to become a tropical storm uh, here sometime in the near future and down in the bottom right in the yellow shaded area we now have an african easterly wave that has worked its way into the atlantic 20 percent chance of development over the next five days we'll show you each of those here in just a few moments but at this moment, it gives me the opportunity to go ahead and add our disclaimer for 2021, and that is please visit the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov for all official forecast info. If watches and warnings are issued for your area, please heed the advice of your local county emergency state management officials. All right, going to switch you over to some imagery now. This is today's high res. This is the uh, African wave that moved off the coast of West Africa uh, today. Uh, we first saw it last night and started to get in some hints about the possibility that this may try to spin up. Now, I don't want to get anybody too excited surf-wise, swell-wise, and or tropical cyclone development-wise. And that is because Sal seems to be in control. However, this wave is going to move in this direction and you can already start to see the connecting of the dots. If you understand atmospheric flow, you know this is dipping down and pushing in here into this easterly trade like this. There's an upper level feature that's in here right here. And so what do we always talk about? Always watch tail ends of fronts along stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop. So this upper level feature is in here is spinning like this. And you can see that at the tail end is this tropical wave that's now entered the Eastern Caribbean. Now, if you've been following us on our social feeds, we've been detailing this area right here. This area is likely to be the trigger mechanism for the development of what is now 92L Invest in the Bay of Campeche. We'll switch over to that uh, here as we move forward. But this easterly wave is going to move off towards the west. And there's indication in the satellite imagery, at least to us, that this is setting up for a pattern that we call a fork in the road. And fork in the road is when the northern extension of a tropical wave that's moving off towards the west will break off the main wave axis and then the spin get north of Puerto Rico. And or sometimes if the spin gets caught up in the Eastern Caribbean due to easterly trade winds, sometimes that vorticity spin can slide up through Mona Passage through in here. And then once north of Puerto Rico or coming up through Mona Passage, this opens up the door to move into the Bahamas with a chance to spin up towards the Florida Straits or you know up off the Florida coast. So those are the things that we look at, and if you give me a second here, we'll readjust, and you can see connecting the dots. This is what we're talking about right here. Okay, so you have the easterly wave down in here. You see this, what appears to be like a little dot right in here, or this little counterclockwise spin that looks to be in here. So this tells us the direction of travel, and then... Again, once we get in here, although this 
is part of the easterly wave that's in the Eastern Caribbean. Based on pattern recognition, this tells us, and if you looked at last night's run of the 18 ZGFS, this tells us that there's a strong possibility that the northern extension of this tropical wave is going to break off the main wave access and get north of Puerto Rico. We got plenty of time to watch that, but more importantly, is watching what's happening with 92L Invest. For those that follow us on our social feeds, we are now 72 hours into our pin tweet on that, what has now become 92L Invest. We posted this as a pin tweet the other day, so I'm on my phone versus being at Dubu Central. So this is a hand draw on a small screen, my first call. We'll reevaluate once back at Dubu Central. Three pass, weak TD slash tropical storm, outside chance, category one hurricane. Gonna go ahead and pin this. Here comes 91L Invest. I made a mistake there. We already had 91L Invest, but everything else in this pin tweet still holds true with the exception that chances have decreased a lot that there won't be a category one hurricane in the Gulf. I can't rule it completely out, but it all depends on what happens over the next 72 hours. Switch you back over to some imagery now so you can see what's going on here. I'm gonna zoom into the Bay of Campeche. And if you look closely, here's the center of circulation with what is 92L. The current thinking is, and I saw Levi Cowan uh, mention this the other day when he did his first video of the year, and that is, is that it appears that this system is retrograding back towards the southwest and wants to drift back into the East Pacific, okay? But the trigger mechanism for tropical cyclones development is going to likely come off the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. Let me zoom in here for you a little bit, okay? You see how this has like a banding feature in here? Do you see that? You see this vorticity spin that's right here off the tip of the Yucatan? Where did we get those systems last year? How many systems did we have come off the tip of the Yucatan? And so what's going to end up happening, in my opinion, based on what I see, what based on the observations that, that I've made, is that this vorticity spin associated with this tropical wave, and you can already see it's finding its path already, this vorticity spin, you see this little clear section right in here? It's moving up in here towards the Gulf of Honduras. For those longtime followers, you know we have that pattern that's called round the corner. So in this example of the imagery that I'm presenting you today, we have two of the most common patterns that produce tropical cyclones. You have this easterly wave that's going to move through here. The northern extension is likely to break off and get north of Puerto Rico. Okay, I'm not saying anything is going to develop. I'm just showing you pattern here. And then you also have this feature of round the corner. And round the corner is, is vorticity spin is common in here off Panama and Costa Rica. Spins come and go, just like the Tampico, Tampico Low up in here that you often see us post about. These are common features that you find in the tropics during the tro when when it's transitional season. You'll start to see Tampico Low. When it's uh, tropical season, you'll start to see this uh, uh, spin develop off Panama and Costa Rica. And then what happens is a westward moving tropical wave comes into the Eastern Caribbean and it begins to work with the main axis of the tropical wave. Wave, and that's how you can get round the corner going. And what we mean by that is that the vorticity spin starts off in the Southern Caribbean, and when it moves into the Southern Caribbean, it then rounds the corner of the Nicaraguan Honduran border and gets into the Gulf of Honduras where it gets a chance to spin up. Now, I want you to take note look at, uh, isn't that weird how it's got kind of like a clear spherical shape right in there? Okay, so that's what we're watching for. This tropical wave is going to slide up in here, or the vorticity spin associated with this tropical wave is going to slide up into the backside of this trough right here, and that will likely trigger 
tropical cyclogenesis now becomes track where do we think it's gonna go okay so for for those of you who are new to the follow what we always like to do is we like to block the system out and look to see what's ahead of the system to kind of get a pregame of what's going on here and if you look closely this is that vorticity spin that spun out over oklahoma uh, i saw a few people posting that it almost looked like it was tropical in nature well guess what it's time for the tail end of the front game guys okay and so the rule of thumb is you always watch areas of low pressure along stalled or excuse me you always watch uh, stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop and that sometimes low pressure likes to attach itself to the tail so with the 92L in that tropical wave out of your vision now you can start to pick okay I know something's going to come up in here and spin up where's it going to go if you remember early on in the model runs it was coming up out of the Bay of Campeche close to Texas and remember the models had that northwest turn remember that okay and then they switched up and then they were going more towards the Florida Panhandle remember that and then there was the other time where our, our based on the pin tweet the three pass which is like this okay and then notice how you've got this right in here so it's going to try to find whatever comes out of the Caribbean, be it partial energy of 92L invest or what could become 94L invest, technically I think it should be, is where's, where is there going to be a chance for consolidation into a complete tropical system? That will be the question, okay? But regardless of whether or not the thing turns into a tropical depression, tropical storm, or maybe even a category one hurricane, that's not your issue because weak areas of low pressure are known to produce copious amounts of rain. And a slow moving tropical depression slash tropical storm can cause as much havoc as a fast moving category one hurricane. And that is because with a fast-moving Category 1 hurricane, that thing's here today and gone tomorrow. With a slow-moving TD or tropical storm, you have endless days of rain. So don't get confused with intensity. It's not always intensity. Okay, so we're fairly confident we're going to get a system come up in the Gulf of Mexico. And regardless of whether or not it turns into a TD tropical storm or category one hurricane, where's it going to go after that? Most of you that follow know that I'm a big proponent of up and to the right, up and to the right. And if you saw today's Euro run, which I'll walk you all through some model runs here in just a little bit, but just looking at atmospheric flow, okay, just looking at atmospheric flow in the imagery without looking at models, you can see that this is spinning like this. Okay, so this is creating drag through here. There's another, see this, this curvature in here. You've got this one right here. So as this comes up, guess where it wants to go? To the right, because this, the jet stream is pushing everything that way. So we have development off the outer banks with, with this tropical depression here forecast to become tropical storm bill, possibly in the next 24 to 48 hours. And um, boy, I didn't even prep for the names. Uh, that means this would be the C name down here if this developed. But if you saw today's run of the Euro, the Euro brings the system up here and look, is it a coincidence? that this area right in here also looks like it's a clear patch with a spherical shape? Is this the path that the system is going to take, at least according to the Euro? For those of you who saw the other day, we talked about that there were signs that the system was going to come out and exit off the outer banks. I thought I had missed the signal because then we had this develop, which by the way, this is classic rule of thumb. Always watch tail ends of fronts along stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop. Sometimes low pressure likes to attach itself to the tail. Um, 
but with the 12Z Euro today showing the system coming out of the Gulf, moving off towards the northeast. Now, the Euro actually moves it off New England. We'll show you that here in the model runs here in just a minute. But those are the things that we're looking at as far as storm-wise. I know a lot of you surfers are going, hey, man, get to the surf. We'll get to that here in just a second. We'll switch over to that. Let me prep for it. All right, I got to shift gears here for just a minute, guys, and switch you over to this southern hemiswell that you've seen me post about, okay? And so here's your source right here, and there's still some uncertainty, but we'll show you that in the model and the idea. A South Atlantic storm is going to develop down in here between the southern tip of Africa and South America, okay? And this is going to get some water moving, but the effect is... Because we've had four or five tropical waves that moved off in succession, and the timing of this storm, this is going to get some southern hemiswell moving through here and passing through the intertropical convergence zone on its way into the North Atlantic. Okay, and so the negatives are this tropical cyclone development off the outer banks and the rotational spin in here um, of the atmosphere but what happens when these tropical waves move off like this on the underbelly of the system the are these tropical waves they can enhance a southern hemiswell so what you have is you have swell being generated by south atlantic storm and that water is going to end up getting pushed here and with the natural flow and the trade wind flow, it's going to allow this southern hemiswell to come out of here. Show it to you in the latest Wave Watch 3. Now, this is starting uh, right about uh, the next 24 to 48 hours. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, I'll advance the model for you. Notice that red patch coming out of there? Okay, so that's long period swell, 15 to 18 seconds, and it's moving in. Uh, give me a second. Let me look at time frame here, guys. So this is uh, just inside six days, okay? We had posted this. By the way, this is tropicaltidbits.com. You guys can visit the website and click around and figure it out for yourself. I'm just showing you what I see. And so I'll advance the model for you. This is going into six days. And as we get into day 10, okay, notice how the swell has made it all the way over towards the mid-Atlantic and into New England. All right, previous runs... We're showing solid 15 to 18 widespread long period southern hemiswell impacting the coast. But with the recent developments of what's happening with what could become Tropical Storm Bill, you can see that the seas start to get scattered. And so there's not a lot of high confidence in there, just something we'll watch. Not going to spend any more time on that um, uh, at this moment. All right, switch gears again and switch you back to some imagery. Let me zoom out here because now we're going to talk about possible surf for the mid-Atlantic. And then finally, we'll talk about surf for the Gulf of Mexico. There may be an outside shot at some mid-Atlantic swell uh, or, or wind swell coming from what could become uh, Bill. But the majority of the winds look to be out of the west-southwest. And, of course, that's not a swell-producing wind for portions along the uh, east U.S. coast. We'll show you that here uh, in the Windy app. Give me a second. Let me get that out of the way. And you're probably looking at this going, wow, what is that thing at the top? That is a late-season storm force low that the energy moved off the United States a few days ago. There was one before it. And this is late season winter swell pattern, if you will. Because during winter, we watch for areas of low pressure to move off the United States and bombify into North Atlantic lows. And those are the ones that send the big swells all the way down to the Caribbean. Sometimes, depending on where they develop off the East Coast in here, like where this area of low pressure is, that's the ones that can put the swell down in there towards South Florida. But I wanted to point this out because th for those who've seen us post late season, storm force low, is because you typically see this in wintertime. 
not not now during hurricane season so again difference between winter and summer winter we're watching for areas of low pressure that are caught in the jet stream coming out of the gulf of mexico to bombify in here to give us big swells that's where you get the major swell event status and then during hurricane season we go into the reverse and we watch for areas of low pressure to come off africa to spin up and give us the big major swell events okay but let's look at this as we forecast uh this is the european model okay and we're just going to go out a couple of days i guess um no sense in really spending a lot of time on this as well so we've got two swell sources the southern hemi swell and what we've got here off the outer banks okay and i'm hoping you guys score um come on zoom in my computer's slow sorry about that guys all right so here's this spin that is td2 off the outer banks and as you can see the majority of the flow right now is out of the west southwest as we advance the model in time you can see the system pulls way up very quickly and again what do we have here all west southwest flow not a swell producer guys okay so th this is for those who equate name system with automatic swell it don't work that way <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't work that way hang on sorry i was cracking myself up there for a minute okay so this is the 12 z euro this is for tuesday and just like we gave you the example, always watch tail ends of fronts along stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop. Sometimes low pressure likes to attach itself to the tail. All right, so look, here we go. 92L at, down here, down at the tail of this trough in here, okay? We know that we've got this area of spin that's coming out of the Eastern Caribbean. I'll advance it into Wednesday. Now, uh, keep in mind, this is one model of one model run, okay? Because we still don't know yet. This is one of those nothing in weather is ab nothing in weather is absolute until it happens in real time. Okay, you with me? So this is Wednesday. We've got increasing southeast flows starting to set up on top of the Yucatan Peninsula right here. If you followed us long enough, you know that when you get increasing easterly trade winds coming through the eastern Caribbean through here. And I'll advance the model to Thursday. You can get Yucatan Gap Channel swell. And what that is, is that the seas are starting to rise in here. Water's starting to push. And as it pushes, it's got that water's got nowhere to go except for between this and here, slamming to the coast, right? And so this is Thursday. Area of low pressure developing. Friday, lifting up towards the gulf north north gulf coast and gets in this pocket right here now this is going to get some northeast groundswell going in here along the texas coast you've got strong southerly flow aimed in here at louisiana i don't know what the tides are tides wise but with this type of flow and fetch you're going to get some localized coastal flooding along with heavy rains and uh, again, regardless of whether or not it develops or not. So this is Friday. Um, it looks like surf-wise, guys, I hate to throw people under the bus, but it looks like the Florida Panhandle. You can see here, there's not a lot of wind here at the moment. And so um, I, I don't want to guess on swell arrival time. Um, and I don't want to pick out any spots. But... With that said, I'll advance the Euro going into Saturday, Father's Day weekend, and you'll see that the area of low pressure now is just south, southwest of Lake Charles, Louisiana, okay? And then now you've got that onshore flow pushing into New Orleans. Not going to spend any more time on that as far as landfall location, intensity, and how much rain but I will advance the model for you some more to show you the idea of the European model um, trying to make an exit with the system off the outer banks. This is going into Sunday 
and you'll see that the system is now moved inland. Oh, this thing is so slow. I'm so sorry, guys. Give me a second here. Let me see. Okay, so here it is up into Georgia and then moving towards the Outer Banks. The European model actually takes it further north than what I think of an exit. So we'll just go to the end of the run. Oops. Sorry about that. Hey, guys, it's been a while since I've done a video. Give me a break here. So... The European model takes the system out of the Bay of Campeche, goes up and to the right, just like we like, or at least favor. And this is a long ways out, guys. So never take one model of one model run as the gospel. But that's where it puts it, Tuesday, June 22nd. All right, so that's all I got for you for now. Um, I'm going to try and do another video here shortly. Um, stay tuned for it. Thanks.